and welcome to Zodiac Tarot Readings for August 2016. These readings will bring me up to um, a year that, uh, that I started these. The first readings I put out were September 2015. I'm still considering whether to continue with these monthly readings, uh, maybe continue with the monthly readings at the beginning of the month and drop the mid-month updates. Um, I'll see. I haven't decided yet. Also, so important, um, I have successfully moved my website, The Witch's Corner, from its old uh, web host to our new location. And the new URL for The Witch's Corner is amethystrain.blogspot.com. This is not a blog. This is a website. So technically, the only post on this blog is the home page. Um, and then I have added all the other pages that I've moved over from the original site. And those pages can be found in the menu in the right column. So amethystrain.blogspot.com. The Witch's Corner lives on. For this month's readings, I'm going to choose different tarot decks for different signs, and I actually haven't decided um, which I'm going to use for which. Um, it's something that I will decide um, as I get ready to do the readings. So before each reading, I will introduce to you which, which deck I'm using for that particular sign. As usual, um, in the links in the description box below each video are links to free calculators to help you find your moon and your rising sign. Most people, especially those not totally familiar with astrology, just fixate on our sun sign. But sometimes your moon and your rising sign will actually resonate with you more. Um, and you should watch those videos as well. And sometimes it's just fun to do so because it rounds out the reading somewhat. And some of you may not have like a separate sign for each of those um, three aspects because my moon and my rising sign are both the same. So it will be interesting for you to use those links and to find your moon and your rising sign if you don't already know them. My main plug for this August is my book, The Spiritual Feminist. I would like to say that um, uh, from the title of this book, this is a book on matriarchal spirituality, and that is my version of feminism. And um, this book leads women to healing, self-discovery, and a spirituality that is uh, based in the goddess. And that's what the spiritual feminist is all about, and I highly recommend this book for women everywhere. Also, at my YouTube channel, there is a playlist called Woman Speak. There are 14 videos in this playlist, and these videos are based on my book, The Spiritual Feminist. There's a different theme and a different goddess for each one of the videos, so you might want to take a look there and enjoy. And now, with no further ado, on to August Zodiac Tarot Readings. Hello Aquarius and welcome to your August reading. The deck that I'm going to use for you is this one and I'm not even totally sure how to pronounce it. It looks like Joy D. Vivre by Paulina Cassidy. And I'm totally sure that I have massacred the title of this deck. This was gifted to me just this past week um, by a dear friend. And she claimed that she didn't like to use this for reading. She was unable to use this deck for reading. So she was wondering if I would be able to. So I have not worked with it yet. And this is going to be the first time that I try to read with this deck. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. 
Now, I'm not going to give a lot of information on the decks because I will save that for video reviews if I decide to do any. Okay. Very pretty back. I'm going to shuffle up a little bit. These are very fanciful cards, the artwork. And I'm going to, I'm not going to bother moving the camera. I'm not going to do a reading with the camera sitting ahead of me. It's too distracting. I'm going to be drawing four cards from all areas of the deck. Okay. And let's see what we have here. Okay. First card, Ten of Swords. It's a very whimsical deck, very whimsical artwork. And I have not taken the time to look at this deck or go through this deck, so this is also the first time that I have viewed this deck. So, the feeling that I'm getting from this Ten of Swords is the idea of exhaustion, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional. The idea of someone who has tried so hard, perhaps for a long period of time, to get a group of people working together uh, in unison towards a common goal of getting everyone on the same page. So tired of trying to um, pass your ideas along, um, tired of trying to promote um, a way of doing something, to promote a product, to promote um, something that would be a betterment for whoever you're with, whatever company you're with, whatever group you're with, whether this is familial or work-related. Um, there's the idea of there's the idea of cemeteries too. There's the idea of burying the past. There's the idea of uh, not being able to move forward until something that has happened in the past and has been very painful, very life-changing, has been put to rest, has been um, surmounted, has been overcome, has been transformed into positive energy. Lots of, um, lots of uh, tunnels and pathways and roadways and uh, bridges that must be crossed and traversed. It's as though someone's on some sort of a very personal journey and, and in amongst the way, as I said at first, it's also um, in, in contrast trying to get a group of people on the same page working towards the same goal in order to be successful at something. But there's also a feeling of a solitariness about it. And that's probably being the only port in a storm, being one among a group or a crowd um, where you still feel isolated. There's also the idea of swimming upstream, going against the odds, trying something everyone else told you is impossible. Card number two. Knight of Coins. Oh, this is a beautiful card too. Isn't the artwork gorgeous? It's very whimsical. I hope it's coming in clear for you. What a beautiful card. I have the feeling of stability. I have the feeling of feet planted firmly in one place. I have the feeling of innate, deep-rooted stubbornness. Um, a staunchness not to be deterred, not to be swayed to someone else's way of thinking. I have the idea of someone who will be stubborn for the principle of the thing, even if the outcome will be negative if they hang on to their position in the matter. It's, that's, that basically describes stubbornness. I have the feeling of someone who will mount obstacles or take on arguments or um, 
just for the sake of the sake of arguing, just for the sake of making a point. I also have the feeling of an individual, and this feels like a young male. Um, knights to me, I know that lots of readers say knights, queens, kings, pages, they can all be male, female, and that's, that's true. But for me, in this reading, this knight feels like a young male. Um, there, there's also the idea of putting yourself above others, this individual, of, of ego and um, ego overshadowing um, common sense. Um, ego standing in the way of progression and forward movement because um, you don't want to be wrong. You don't this individual, when I say you, I'm talking about this individual. They don't want to be wrong. They, um, they think they're right and they feel they're right and they're going to stand their ground because they, it, it would be humbling and it would be humiliating to this individual to be proved wrong. I'm getting a very strong sense of, um, of a Leo with this. I don't go um, Traditionally, as most of you know, if you know how I read, I read intuitively. Uh, I have the feeling of a Leo individual, and Leos are very proud. If you want to remain on good terms with a Leo, if you want a successful relationship, a continuing relationship with a Leo, never humiliate them. To humiliate a Leo would be one of the worst things that you could do. Also, there's the feeling of circular emotion. There's a feeling of spirituality. There's a feeling of, um, the idea has come into my mind of catching more flies with sugar than with vinegar. Um, you, have to, you have to not force your ideas on this individual. You have to not stamp your foot and demand that they change their position. You can sway them though. You can sway them with sweetness. You can sway them with uh, praise. Remember, they are very egotistical. They're very proud. You can, you can sway them by. It sounds so terrible. You can sway them by making them believe, in a certain way, that you're agreeing with them, but at the same time laying out um, your own ideas, laying out your own game plan. I have a feeling, and this sounds very sexist, but I have a feeling women will understand what I just said more than most men. It's making them believe in themselves while you're at the same time giving them your point of view. Card number three. The Chariot. Uh, this artwork is very fairy-like. It's very fanciful and fantasy-like. It's very beautiful. It's delicate and fragile. Oh, the chariot. Going places, going places. Oh, but the Argonaut. Um, this chariot is an Argonaut drawn by seahorses. Uh, the Argonaut is a single, solitary creature. And there is the idea with this and the, the, the seahorses drawing it forward of someone being drawn out of a solitary existence, someone being um, pulled into the spotlight, someone joining society, um, a single individual meeting someone and being drawn out of their shell. And there's also the idea of forward movement as with the chariot and and pathways to choose coming to a fork in the road and having to choose which way to go but but with the element of water thrown in here with the argonaut and the seahorses it's more of a, a follow your intuition a feeling of um, watery dreamness of, of being uh, floating on the waves and having the universe and fate and destiny all take you um, places that you didn't expect to go in ways that you never believed would come about for you. It, um, the chariot in this deck seems much um, dreamier, connected to the element of water. Um, 
it's vapory and ethereal and and inspiring and magical card number four card number four is queen of wands I get a very different energy with the queen in this deck than I do in um, most decks. This queen is all about, all about growth and fertility. She's all about planting seeds um, in the course of her life, in the course of her travels, in the course of her path, planting seeds um, not only of material gardens, but seeds of hope and inspiration and spirituality and and ideas um, amongst all the people that she connects with or touches with in her life. There's a, a fairy feeling about her. She's as, she gives off a, a, a happy, calm, uh, stable, stable yet ethereal um, energy. She's all the things that you don't see and know are there. She's dreams that you only catch snatches of when you wake up. She's she's the the tiny uh, movements that you see out of the corner of your eye when you're alone in the house. Um, she's um, a sparkle in the flower garden that you're not sure what what is it? Is it is it an insect? Is it a Fairy, is it? She's all those magical things that we know are there and we keep seeking proof of and no matter what the universe gives us as proof, we're always seeking more proof. But she's that energy. I don't know if I've explained it very well. I love the feeling of this card. She will, she will plant the seeds for this night. She is, is the character that will, she's the character that will encourage his growth, that will temper his ego. She's the individual that he's going to meet in life who's going to get him off that horse and off that mound that he's planted on. She's going to entice him um, into a life of rich growth and movement, gentle movement though, a, pro, um, a life's progression forward which feels like a, like a lifetime commitment, something that will grow and expand with time. He's watching her, he already sees her and he watches her and he is aware of her, but he probably has not approached her yet. Um, in all of the, this night's ego and um, over self-confidence, actually inside he doesn't feel that way. Inside he hesitates. The bravado on the outside is something that he uses to make the world believe that he is much more secure than he actually is. But she has the key. She has the key to make him all that he can be. She has um, the will and the gentleness and the spirituality to her to enrich his life. I see a couple here. I see um, a, a lightning and um, a coming out of the Ten of Swords and the world that it implies um, with this couple and movement forward. Um, this is actually a very magical coupling and um, and I hope that the sweet lady who gave me this deck watches this video and see what you think. Give me some feedback and um, see uh, how the reading went and how you feel connections with the cards were. This is a very unusual deck. You were, you were right. I didn't know if I would be able to read with this deck either. And I'm still not sure I did. The people who will watch this, those Aquarians, you'll have to give me some feedback and let me know how this deck connected with you. And that's where I'm going to end the reading for Aquarius.